Hello, I'm Dr. Pasantin Marashli, lecturer of internal medicine and hepatogastroenterology at the Faculty of Medicine, Ain Shams University. Before starting any sort of clinical examination, there are certain rules that we need to be aware of. Um, first off, we need to greet the patient. We need to introduce ourselves to the patient and to tell them exactly what we're going to be doing, whether it was performing a procedure or performing any sort of clinical examination in order to gain uh, oral consent that the patient is willing to do so. Next, we need to ensure proper exposure of the patient um, according to the site that we wish to examine. Uh, for example, with regards to abdominal examination, we need to make sure that the patient is exposed from the nipples all the way to the symphysis pubis. Um, next, we need to ask the patient if they're in pain so that we can avoid the area that they're complaining from or at least keep it till the end of examination if need be. We're going to demonstrate those steps right now. ازاي حضرتك؟ انا دكتوره بسنت انا مدرس جهاز هضمي وكبد في طب عين شمس. استاذنك ممكن افحصك؟ اتفضل يا فندم. طيب آه في اي مكان بيوجعك؟ نعم في اي مكان بيوجعك تحب تقول لي عليه؟ جنب الهند. طيب خلاص انا مش هحاول ان انا قدر الامكان ما اكشفش على الحته دي بس لو انا سببت لك اي الم عايزك تعرفني تمام؟ اوكي شكرا. We're now going to examine the spleen. Examination of the spleen always starts from the right iliac fossa with the very same maneuvers that we've mentioned for palpation of the liver. Um, if we did not detect the spleen like so, there are special positions that we can attempt in order to try and detect the spleen. So first, we're going to start from the right iliac fossa. Again, by pushing my hand, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, palpate the spleen with the tips of my fingers, and I'm going to be pushing my hand inwards and upwards, synchronized with the breathing of the patient, whereby I push inwards when the patient is uh, breathing in, and upwards when the patient is in maximum inspiration. So I could not detect the patient's spleen. Sometimes if a patient has an enlarged spleen, the spleen tends to um, enlarge in a longitudinal plane whereby it would be more detectable if I were to examine from the left iliac fossa rather than the right iliac fossa, which we're going to attempt now. With the tips of my fingers, again, I would examine by pushing inwards and upwards. So again, I could not detect the spleen even when palpating from the left iliac fossa. So what I would try to do is perform bimanual examination whereby I would be pushing with my left hand against the, uh, the lower back or the uh, left coastal margin and uh, attempting to palpate with my right hand as I've done already before. So I'd be pushing against the back ribs. Again, I could not detect the spleen, which is completely fine. It rather means that the patient's spleen is not enlarged. But as a final attempt to try and, and detect the lower border of the spleen, I would do a percussion of the trobes area. Percussion of the trobes area normally is hyper-resonant. Sometimes it can be dull. One of the reasons where it could be dull is enlargement of the spleen. Other reasons, however, need to be considered. For example, if the patient had just had a meal, the stomach fullness would cause the percussion to be dull in Trobe's area. So uh, we need to take that into account. However, it could be um, a good uh, way to try and detect the spleen uh, in an attempt to elicit if there's an enlarged spleen in the patient. So I would be percussing right over here. It's hyper-resonant in his case, which means that he hasn't eaten recently and he doesn't have an enlarged spleen. 
So this concludes examination of our spleen. However, I'd like you to know that as a final comment, if the spleen was rather enlarged, then I would need to uh, mention certain aspects of the spleen. For example, I would need to mention where I have felt the tip of the spleen, how many centimeters from the uh, lower border of the left coastal margin. I would need to uh, talk about the edge, the surface, the consistency as I have with the liver. And uh, I would try to attempt to um, uh, uh, palpate the splenic notch if I could elicit the notch. And I would also mention if there was any tenderness while examining the spleen. Now we're going to percuss for ascites uh, in an attempt to detect if there was shifting dullness. The presence of shifting dullness indicates the presence of moderate uh, ascites. Um, so uh, we start that by first uh, percussing for bladder dullness in order to divert our examination away from that. So we start percussing from the midline. Okay, so I can detect dullness, which is elicited by the bladder, right above the umbilicus. So it would be wise to start percussing for shifting dullness above that, and I would move my hand uh, from a transverse position to a longitudinal position, and I would move to the right side, and then again on the left side, not going horizontally, but rather in a more inclined pattern, because any, full, uh, any um, uh, accumulation of fluid in the abdomen would be more in the dependent parts, which is more in the flanks. So rather than going horizontally, I would rather go a little bit inclined, directing my fingers towards the flanks of the patient. So we start our percussion. all the way to the flanks. I can detect a slightly impaired note of percussion. So what we're going to do now is ask the patient, I will fix my hand first of all, and then ask the patient to uh, lie on their sides on the left lateral position, um, wait for a few seconds or uh, rather a minute, and then perform percussion again to detect if there was any shifting dullness. <laughs> So we wait for 30 seconds to a minute, and then we percuss again. Percussion that was slightly impaired when the patient was lying on his back has now become resonant, which indicates positive shifting dullness. We can repeat the very same steps on the left side of the patient. So a slightly impaired note of percussion can be detected right over here. I would again ask the patient to lie on the right lateral position and wait for another 30 seconds to a minute before attempting to percuss again. And I would be expecting that the dullness or the impaired note that I have detected when the patient was lying flat on their back would become a resonant again, which indicates positive shifting dullness on both sides of the abdomen. Uh, the presence of a positive shifting dullness is a sign that there is a moderate accumulation of fluid, which is moderate ascites. Um, if there was uh, dullness uh, detected on percussing, however, there was an absence of shifting dullness whereby the impaired percussion note or the dull percussion note transforms into a resonant note, then this might indicate insisted ascites, for example. Um, or another cause of dullness, such as a localized uh, mass or organomegaly of some sort. Um, as for mild ascites, which is accumulation of minimal fluid in the peritoneal cavity, it would not be detected with shifting dullness. That's why uh, when we're eliciting a positive shifting dullness sign, we say that the patient has moderate accumulation of fluid. But if it were not detected, we never say that the patient does not have any ascites at all. Rather, we say that there is no moderate accumulation of fluid. There could be mild accumulation on the other hand, and this can be detected by a special maneuver, which is called the knee-elbow position, whereby the patient um, lies prone for about five minutes in order to um, uh, collect fluid in the most dependent part, which would be around the umbilicus. And then we ask the patient to uh, take a knee-elbow position 
And then we try to uh, perform a scratch sign, whereby we put the stethoscope in the most dependent part of the abdomen, and we scratch along his abdomen until we can detect a change in the note of uh, uh, the sound when we're, per, uh, when we're auscultating uh, on the dependent part in an attempt to detect if there was minimal accumulation of fluid. As for tense ascites, on the other hand, which is accumulation of uh, a large amount of fluid in the peritoneal cavity, uh, a special maneuver as well can be done, which is tapping uh, method to detect ascites, whereby we tap along one side of the patient's abdomen and putting our hand on the other side, we try to elicit if there was a fluid thrill, which indicates the presence of large amount of peritoneal fluid in the cavity or uh, severe ascites. Dear students, thank you for your attention and uh, we sincerely hope that this video was of benefit for you.